Hello everyone. What we're going to do in this pre-lecture is go through the remaining Lewis structures on the handout we started to work in class. So we did do the first two of these in class and these are the correct Lewis structures. The first one we count the valence electrons, so count the dots. If you don't have this sheet in front of you, it is posted in Sapling, so you can print this out. It has the rules for drawing Lewis structures. So we count the dots, so we count the valence electrons. We then typically put the less electronegative element in the center. Okay, and we talked about the trend for electronegativity. And then we make single bonds, so these are single bonds, a two electron bond between the central atom and the outer atoms, the terminal atoms. We complete the octets on the outer atoms first, and if there are any extra electrons, we put them on the center. So the first structure works out perfectly in the sense that all the octets are satisfied. Lewis, the Lewis model is based on what is called the octet rule, and again it's based on atoms achieving this noble gas configuration with two electrons in the s orbital and six electrons in the p for a total of eight octet. So the first structure works out great. The second structure, we complete the octets on the outer atoms. That takes care of 32 electrons. We have four left. If you have extra electrons, we place those as lone pairs on the central atom. And the reason why we do that is that we then only exceed the octet rule for one atom, the central atom. If we were to do make a double bond, for example, we'd exceed the octet on two atoms. And if we made two double bonds in this case, which we tried in class, we'd actually exceed the octet rule on three different atoms. Okay, so extra electrons, if something's going to exceed the octet rule, it will be the central atom. All right, so let's get to some new ones. That just summarizes what we did in class. Okay, SO2, six valence electrons for sulfur, two oxygen, six each. Just look at the group number. We have 18 electrons, all right? Oxygen is more electronegative. Remember, fluorine is the most electronegative element, so it increases across to fluorine and decreases away, okay? So oxygen is more electronegative. We put sulfur in the middle. Complete the octets on the oxygen, the outside atoms first. Okay, that takes care of 16 electrons. We only have two left. We place the two on sulfur. We have placed our 18 electrons. Are we done? No, we are not done. This one, look up at the rules. Look up, I say look up. Look at the sheet of paper with the rules on it. Again, print this out from sapling if you don't have it. And it says if, the cent if you've placed all the electrons, which we have, check, and the central atom is still short of electrons, this is where we make multiple bonds. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two electrons from, say, this oxygen, and we're going to move them up and make a double bond. All right, so I'm going to erase this now. And so those two electrons that were a lone pair, I'm going to make a double bond. This is a four electron bond. Okay, so each time we draw a line between atoms, it's a two electron bond. Single bond, two electron bond, double bond, four electron bond. Have we satisfied the octet rule now for sulfur? Yes, we have. We now have two, four, six, eight electrons around sulfur. Okay, octet rule. We've satisfied the octet rule here for that oxygen, and we've satisfied it for the other oxygen, two, four, six, eight. All right, so that is a better Lewis structure than what we had before. All the octet rules are satisfied. Now, I know some of you are thinking ahead, and you're going, well, why didn't I put the double bond on the other side? And it turns out that we could have. We could have moved this lone pair. So we could draw an alternate structure, that looks like this with the double bond on the right-hand side of the molecule. And that is a correct Lewis structure as well. 
And so both of these are correct, and we're going to put a double-headed arrow between these, and we're going to say that these are what are called resonance structures. All right. And we'll talk more about what resonance means in class. Quickly, it means that it's, it's really based on the limitations of the Lewis model. And neither of those two structures really represents the real structure of the molecule. The real structure is an average of those two structures in which the bonds are between a single and a double bond. All right, they're, they're kind of a bond and a half in this case. And we can't show that in the Lewis model, so we do the best we can. We draw a single bond on one side, and then we change that to a double bond in the other resonance structure and vice versa. And so the real structure is an average of those two. We'll talk a little bit more about resonance in class. All right, so there's SO2. Let's go to nitrate. Five valence electrons for nitrogen, three oxygens each with six. What does that negative one charge mean? It means we have one extra electron, so we have to add that in. So that takes us to 24 electrons. Nitrogen is less electronegative than oxygen. Put that in the middle. Complete the octets on the outer atoms first. And where does that get us? How many electrons have we placed? 24. Check. Are we done? Now, that's not the best Lewis structure we can draw because nitrogen does not have eight electrons. So again, if the center, if you've placed all the electrons and the central atom is short, what do you do? Make a multiple bond. So again, we're going to end up with resonance structures here because you could see, well, do we make the double bond on the left oxygen, the right, or the bottom? We could do it for either one. So let's do one resonance structure where we move, say, this pair of electrons up, make the double bond there. Okay, that would be one. Or we could put the double bond at the, on the bottom oxygen or the left so we can draw two more resonance structures. Okay, so now I'm going to put, oops, I didn't leave myself quite enough room there with that arrow. Get the idea. Let's put another one over here. Okay, and so what we see here is that we have three resonance structures. And again, really none of these is correct. Or let's say it's not a correct representation of the real structure of the molecule. Again, the Lewis model is a really great model for how simple it is, but it has its limitations. And so the real structure is an average of those three. So we have to, in our mind, kind of average those three together and then say, well, the bonds between nitrogen and oxygen are kind of between a single and a double bond. And in effect, since we're averaging three structures, it's kind of like a bond and a third. Okay, so it's, it's going to be more than a single bond, but not a double bond. And about a bond and a third is we average this one double bond over the entire molecule. Okay, One last thing we should do with this Lewis structure or structures is that because we have a negative charge, we should put brackets around the structure and show that it has a negative one overall charge. Okay. Oh, can't see that negative one there, but you get the idea. All the other ones we've drawn so far have been neutral, so you don't have to specify that. Here we do need to say it's negative one. Now we are going to do something in class, our next class meeting, where it's called formal charge, which would be another way of representing the charge in the molecule without having to do square brackets. And we'll talk about what that means when we do that in class. Okay, next one, CO2, carbon dioxide. Four valence electrons for carbon, two oxygens each with six. That gets us to 16 electrons. Carbon is less electronegative. We put that in the center. 
complete the octets on the outer atoms first. And we have placed 16 electrons. Are we done? No, we are not done. Carbon is short. Let's make one double bond. Oops, I erased my oxygen by mistake. Okay, one double bond, how's that? Yeah, it's better. Carbon now has six. Let's go ahead and make another double bond. Let's try this side. How's that? Okay, that's better. Carbon now has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. Octet. All right, and both oxygens do as well. All right, so remember each line we draw is a two electron bond. So each of those double bonds is four electrons, total of eight. So that's the correct Lewis structure for carbon dioxide, two double bonds. Now some of you might be thinking, well, why didn't I draw a triple bond? And you could have, so let's go back to what we had initially. Okay, so we could have brought, brought two lone pairs from one oxygen and made a triple bond. And so we'd end up with this. Okay, so that would be a correct Lewis structure. But then the question becomes, why didn't I put the triple bond on the other side? And we could have. I'm having trouble getting my dots to work out here. All right, well, there we go. That should be eight dots, I guess. All right, so triple bond on the right, triple bond on the left. If we average these two structures, those two resonant structures, what would we get? We would get the first structure that we drew. A single bond and a triple bond would average to a double bond. All right, so we don't draw CO2 with a triple bond because it really would, 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 between these two resonant structures, we would average back to the original structure that we drew. Okay, we have three more. Let's crank through these. Six for sulfur, six fluorines, each with seven. That takes us to 48 electrons. We put sulfur in the middle because it's less electronegative. We will not see fluorine in the middle as a central atom. It does not want to share very many electrons. We make a pretty picture, connect the fluorines as best we can. Okay, complete the octets on the outer atoms first. Those are the fluorines. See how fast I can draw these dots? Not fast enough? Okay, now we count. And if you count correctly, you should count 48. And we're done. Now, just by connecting six fluorines to sulfur, we are going to exceed the octet rule. Sulfur has 12. We didn't, I did mention this in class. When you get down to the third row of the table or below, central atom can exceed octet rule. And the, the thought behind that is, you know, we're further from the nucleus at that point when we get to the third row. And there are more regions of space where the electrons can exist. So if you look at sulfur, which has 3s and 3p orbitals, you could argue in the third energy level you also have d orbitals. Well, those would be empty. Okay. So these extra electrons, we could think about, okay, maybe they're filling the three empty 3d orbitals, okay? So they're going to occupy regions of space that are, that are out there, all right, that are available, and that they're, they're large enough atoms that there's places to put those. If we're in the second row, we just have the 2s and the 2p, and once we get to 8, it's full. We can't add any extra electrons. Okay, so third row or below the central atom. Again, if something exceeds the octet rule, it will be the central atom that exceeds. All right. So we do have sometimes that the Lewis model does not accurately meet its own octet rule, but we will deal with that. Here's another example where we have some issues with the octet rule, and that's because beryllium doesn't have very many valence electrons. It only has two. It's in group two. We have two hydrogens each with one. 
we only have four valence electrons, so only four electrons involved in bonding. How the heck can we get to an octet if we only have four? And you will see we cannot. So beryllium goes in the center. Hydrogen cannot be a central atom. We make two single bonds, two electrons, four electrons, we're done. That's the best we can do. Beryllium ends up being short of an octet. And we tend to see this for beryllium and boron, because boron only has three valence electrons in the gas phase. More so for beryllium than boron. Okay? So just keep that in mind as exceptions. It's kind of hard when beryllium only has two valence electrons and boron only has three to get to an octet. Plus, they're really tiny atoms, so you can't pack that much around them. Okay? So they're way up at the top of the periodic table. They're very tiny atoms. It's hard to pack a lot of atoms around such a small atom. So they will tend to be electron deficient when they are gas phase molecules. As solid phase molecules, they tend to polymerize. Okay? And you'll see things, just to let you know, I don't want to get past my NO2 here, but um, you'll see things like you'll have beryllium bonded to hydrogen, say bonded to hydrogen. No, no, I got that wrong. That's not going to work. Can't do that. Maybe it's not hydrogen. Maybe we have to choose a different element. But i um, trying to think. Uh, it doesn't matter, but it'll, it'll, it'll form multiple bonds and, and form a polymeric structure where you have a repeating unit throughout. And I'll look for an example. I might not be able to do a BEH2. Um, I might have to use an atom that can form. Hydrogen can only form one bond, so I might have to use an atom that can form more than one bond. But we'll do that in class. All right, sorry about that. So, NO2. Here's, here's another problem with the Lewis model. So, we'll see, and again, they're not huge problems. It's just that when Lewis developed his model, and he actually started developing this model in the early 1900s, um, his research advisors kind of didn't really believe in his model, in the Lewis model. So, he kind of put it under wraps for a while and was teaching it in his courses. And then finally, I think in about 1916, he actually published the Lewis model works quite well for how simple it is. Okay? But it's based on the octet rule. Sometimes we'll exceed the octet rule. In this case, we can't get to the octet rule. And where we also find problems is if we have odd number of electrons. Okay? The Lewis model is an electron pair model. And it works pretty well because most molecules have an even number of electrons. Okay, so most molecules have even numbers. There are a few odd-numbered molecules out there. Not that many, surprisingly. If you look at the millions and millions of molecules out there, they, most of them will have an even number. NO2 is one that does not. If we add this up, five for nitrogen, two oxygens each with six, we get 17 electrons. Again, it's going to be hard to complete an octet for everything when you have an odd number. We're going to try the best that we can. Nitrogen is in the middle. It's less electronegative. Complete the octets on the outer atoms first. That's 16. 17 on nitrogen. Is that the best we can do? Now, we can give nitrogen more electrons by making a double bond. So I'm going to take that there. Make a double bond. Now nitrogen has 7. Okay, that's better. Okay, again, we can't get to 8 for everything. We have an odd number. Should we take another pair of electrons from this oxygen and make another double bond and give nitrogen 9? Is that okay? Not okay. Nitrogen is in the second row. It just has the 2s and the 2p orbitals. It cannot exceed the octet rule. Okay? It just can't. So, let's get rid of this one. Go back to what we had. 
So this is a d that's about the best we can do. We could draw a second resonance structure. We could put the double bond on this side. Okay, and you could probably draw a third resonance structure. Okay, where we look make oxygen with an odd number. Okay, so we could think about well, why don't we satisfy the octet on? I guess we could draw even a couple more. Let's satisfy the octet on the nitrogen and leave oxygen with an odd number. Okay, so I think that would be correct as well. Does that have 17, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17? That would be another possibility. Okay, we're going to get, and I'm not going to do that in this recording, but we're going to look at something called formal charge. And if you're curious, take a look in the book and read about what formal charge is. We could assign formal charges to these molecules, and maybe we'll do that in class as one of our first examples, and see, well, which of these might be the better structure based on formal charge? Okay, and that might help us figure out which of these is better. Right now, we're going to say all of these are valid. These are all the best that we can do. Something has to end up short of eight electrons, only seven, um, because we have an odd number. Okay, made it through this worksheet. I think that's it. Um, in class, when we meet in class, I'm going to start out and say, do you have any questions on these? And if you don't have questions, we're going to move on to discuss resonance a little bit more. We'll discuss formal charge. We're going to talk about bond energies. And we will move on from the actual drawing of Lewis structure. So ask your questions at the start of class. And um, let's get them out of the way before we move on doing more things with our Lewis structures. Okay, But you do have to be able to draw these correctly because some of the next things we're going to do when we talk about formal charge and bond energies, if you don't draw them correctly, it's going to be hard to get the other problems correct. Okay, that's it for now. See you soon.